They said Jesus Christ was brass as if they burnt in the furnace. Jesus Christ looks like his brother. So he looks just like the other two. That's right. Correct? That's right. Jeremiah chapter 14. Start at verse 1. The book of Jeremiah chapter 14 and verse 1. The word of the Lord that came to Jeremiah concerning the dirt. Concerning the who? The dirt. Read on. Judah morning. It said Judah. Right? In order to be a Jew, that means you come from a man named Judah. That's right. Judah's what? Mourning. The Jews are in mourning because their king got killed, Jesus Christ. The Jews are in mourning because they went to slavery on slave ships to America. Yeah. The Jews are in mourning because they get killed by the police in America. Oh, yeah. And a, a slew of many other things. Mm -hmm. The real Jews are in mourning. Yeah. Read on. And the gates thereof language. Their leaders, their noble ones, are the gates. They language, they lack leadership. No one is leading God's people correctly because they're all being deceived. What color did the Bible call the Jews? They are black. They are what? They, they are, are black. black. They're red. They are black. Yellow. They are black. When it says burnt in the furnace, brasses have been burnt in the furnace, what it means is they are black. That's in the Bible. All right, Shalom. This is Hara One Ban Yasha Allah of the Lions Den Camp, located right here in Jacksonville, Florida. Before I begin, I want to say Ka Halayim, La Yahweh, Bahashim, Yahweh Shai, Bahashim, Harak Kodash, Ma'amaf. Double honor to the elder apostles of GMS and their elders. And Shalom to you, Akim, and Akwati, my children, that believe in sincerity and truth around the four corners of the earth. Uh, this is going to be a quick. Um, exhortation, correction, and you can also take it as rebuke uh, because these guys are, um, I never heard of these guys. I think they call themselves fishermen of Zion. All right. Um, now, I've I never seen these guys before. They seem kind of new. I'm not sure. But either way, they're still teaching um and breaking down that precept, that old precept <clears throat> that our, um, a, a lot of the old camps used to like to bring out, uh, dealing with, I think it's Jeremiah 14, where it says um, Judah is black, all right? And there's also one in Sol uh, Song of Solomon, but those precepts are not proven that Israel is dark skinned. It's proven that we were in mourning, we were impoverished, impoverished, all right? And we were languishing. Now, people like to bring that out because it shows that they're what? They're novices and they're not well studied and they don't have the proper uh, leaders or teachers around them, all right? So they'll bring that precept out and try to sound deep and they'll take a long time getting to the point and make it, make it more suspenseful and they'll be like, um, so you, you notice where it says in Jeremiah, it says uh, this is regarding the dearth. And the dearth means the loss, everything that we lost at that time. But he just, they skipped over. They're like, go ahead, the dearth, uh huh. <laughs> it's like they, don't, they can't break it down. They don't know what it means. They haven't looked into it. They're just going out there dressing like Israelites. This is Ezekiel 37, all of, clearly. Uh, standing upon their feet a great exceeding army you see a lot of camps everywhere but a lot of them don't have the breath all right they don't have the breath of life the, the spirit of truth instead they have the sinews they out there looking strong he got the staff he got whatever that is on his forehead some egyptian looking stuff style um and they wear the t-shirt with the fringes you can tell they didn't come up under uh, the elders of GMS. See, we, we follow after our elders, man. And they're the ones that teach the sincere truth. All right, a lot of us grow as branches and the Lord endows us with wisdom as well. But the, the customs and the, um, the order, you know, scriptures never said go out and teach in a t-shirt. 
So it's a lot of things I would pick apart just by seeing these guys. Um, I had a couple brothers give me a staff a long time ago, and I put Hebrew letters on it. And I, I like to um, mess with it at the house. But being out there teaching, I don't like to have it because it seems like an act, like you're putting on an act. And, and usually the people that's out there with the staffs, they're usually the ones that um, don't know the breakdowns. <laughs> they be banging the staff on the, on the ground while they're talking, leaning on it when they ain't got no leg or hip, back or hip issues and shit. All right. So, um, yeah, he, he clearly went off when he brought that precept out. Let's get into it. This is Jude 1 and 4. For there are certain men crept in unawares, man. All right, so people are like, who the hell is this camp? Uh, fishers of Zion. Fishermen of Zion. I think they got like thousands of views, too. I think it said like 20,000, something like that. I could be wrong. But he had a lot of views. And it's like, they still up there breaking down shit wrong, man. For there are certain men crept in unawares, man, who were before of old ordained to this condemnation. So they must have been ordained to this position to where they would be going off on the doctrine. Now, uh, you judge a tree by its fruits, man. You see one bad apple, it usually spoils the bunch. And bad fruit means a bad foundation of, uh, of roots. So I'm sure if, if I was to dissect a lot more of their doctrine, which I might, I'll see that they're going off in a lot of other areas, man. I want to see what they think about Revelation 13. Or the return of Yahweh or about Esau going into slavery. You know, I want to see what these guys, uh, their doctrine is, or with certain breakdowns, if they go into it. <laughs> All right. It says, um, ungodly men. So they're not real, they're not really spiritual. They're out there uh, putting on an act. They have a zeal, but not according to knowledge. Turning the grace of our power into lasciviousness and denying the only Lord power and our Lord Yahweh Shai. Now they probably, I don't know if they believe in Yahweh Shai or Yahweh, um, but by denying the truth, they're still denying the Lord. All right, so let's keep going. This is why the Lord said that. It says, 2 Timothy 2 and 15. Study to show thyself approved of Yahweh. See, we're supposed to study. It takes a lot of study, man. You can't just be going out there winging it. Elder Apostle Tahar like to call them wing masters or Johnny Come Latelys. A Johnny Come Lately is somebody that's new to a situation. And a novice is somebody that lifts themselves up. In positions when they're just new recruits. All right. So uh, scriptures say that man, a man slipping with the tongue but not with his heart. So yeah, they could have just made a mistake, or they just in, they're still growing, and these things happen. But hopefully they hear this message and they they do a response and change their doctrine, man, because they're going off, bringing that scripture out, saying that. Um, I hate hearing that, man. When somebody go to that, it shows that they just don't know. They say, yeah, the Lord was black. What color are his people? All right, then let's go to Jeremiah. Uh, nope, you're not supposed to go there. You can go to many precepts to, to prove that Yahweh Shai is dark skinned. Of course, Daniel chapter, uh, I think it's 10, 5 and 6, Revelations uh, 1 and th uh, 3, uh, 13. And then, um, And then um, you, can, you can go to um, the scripture where in Hebrews, where it says the Lord is from the Judah. It clearly shows that our people are going to be brown skinned. The Yahweh shot sprang out of Judah. That's all you really need. It's real simple. He's dark skinned and he sprang out of Judah. And he looked like his people. But shun, it says, study to show thyself approved of Yah unto Yahweh. A workman that needeth not to be ashamed, man. 
rightly dividing the word of truth. See that? We got to rightly divide the word of truth. Because the scriptures say, if you speak not according to this word, that's because there's no light in them. They, they lack the wisdom. They lack the, the, um, uh, the, the truth. But they're out there teaching. All right, had that Edomite lady passing out, <laughs> which got nothing to do with that. But um, I just hate when people bring that precept out and say, "Yeah, uh, the, the, the gates they have language, they are black, right? Because we're black." It's like, nah, bro. I hear you. We are dark. We are, but we're not black. We're not black Hebrew Israelites. See, that's that mindset. That's that philosophy that um, Esau put on our people, that blackness, that Africanism. We're not black, man. All right, we're brown. That's why the scriptures say Yahweh Shai was as bronze, brass as if you burned it in a furnace. All right, people are like, yeah, he was black. No, he was dark brown, deep dark brown. All right. So let's get into it. All right, um, Jeremiah 14 and 1. The word of Yahweh that came to Jeremiah concerning the dearth. All right, so that's what he skipped over. He said, right, the dearth? All right, go ahead. <laughs> it's like, nah, man. Because, you know, if he went into the dearth, it basically breaks down what black means right here in this scripture. All right, so concerning the dearth. Let's get it. The word dearth. It says the restraint, the drought. So there was a drought, man. The Lord sent the drought among our people. He sent the famine. And also an invasion. Um, a threat, a threatening invasion from um, Nebuchadnezzar to come up against us. Now, when did this happen? This is more proof. So they try to use this and say, yeah, it means we were black. The, the meaning dark skin this, which the true Jews are alright but if we go back to um, let's go to 14 Jeremiah 14 and 1 alright this is Jeremiah 14 and 1 because this is when this prophecy already happened man yeah, our, our gates are still languishing. Um, yes, we're impoverished. But spiritually, there's, there's no more drought, man. The Lord is raining out his word upon us right now. So that wouldn't even fit us today. All right, because our land was, and our temple was already destroyed in 70 AD. And then 586 BC. So now, uh, Jeremiah 1 and 1. The words of Jeremiah, the son of Hilkiah, of the priests that were in Anathoth in the land of Benjamin. So he was a Benjamite, uh, Jeremiah. I think his name is Jeremiah or Jeremiah. To whom, let me close this. To whom the word of Yahweh came in the days of Josiah, the son of Ammon, king of Judah all right so Josiah was a righteous king that was uh, uh, over Judah uh, I think 641 to uh, 609 BC to when he was killed by um, uh, the Egyptian Pharaoh uh, Pharaoh Nico II all right 609 BC the Battle of uh, Megiddo now um so Ammon, his his dad was a was a wicked ruler of, of Judah, and his forefather Manasseh. All right, I think one of the sons of Hezekiah, descendant of Hezekiah, where he was a wicked king, and and for their sins that they led our people into, the Lord judged Israel and caused a famine and a and a, um, a drought to happen. To where our land was parched. We had no harvest. We had no water. And that's why they were impoverished. They were li literally 
on the ground. When they say black into the ground, it means bowed down to the ground. So they were literally on the ground, fainting, dried out, dirty ass garments on. But right before that, they were they were rich and wealthy. All right. So let me get something real quick. This is Deuteronomy 32 and 15. All right, because every time Israel would get rich or wealthy, they would rebel against the Lord. All right. Even here in America, slavery, everybody crying out to the Lord. Uh, maybe by the wrong name, who knows? But they were still had a had a zeal towards the Lord, but the wrong knowledge. But now that everybody getting money, getting rich, they're like, no, I gotta get this money. And see, that's why the money saying God they trust, so they trust in the idols. So they wax fat, they get rich, and then they rebel against the Lord. Same thing happened during the time of Jeremiah. And then it became impoverished immediately. After the warnings and warnings, the Lord kept warning our people. But it had nothing to do with us being dark skinned. <laughs> Deuteronomy 32 and 15. But Jeshurun, then Yeshuan, uh, waxed fat and kicked. All right, so we waxed fat, which means to increase as a nation. And then we, our people rebelled against the Lord. Thou art waxing fat, thou art grown, grown thick. Thou art covered with fatness. Then he forsook Yahweh, which made him and lightly esteemed the rock of his salvation. So took it light, took the Lord lightly, man. And that's what the Lord doesn't like. He said, thou shalt not take the, the most high's name in vain. What that mean? That means to not, to treat his name like it's not important, to treat him like he's not important, to take him lightly. You better take him seriously. All right. So let's get back to it. So our people have waxing fat amongst the Assyrians, amongst the, the Syrians, the um, Aramaeans, during the time of the, um, you know, uh, when Israel had power until they fell in the 722 BC to the Assyrian Empire and were taken captive. And then um, Israel, Judah saw that happen to our, to to the northern kingdom and they still became wicked and followed at the idols started celebrating uh babylonian that christmas like they're doing now in america all right um wearing moon earrings and, and things like that so and selling out all right now it says to whom Jeremiah 1 and 2 to whom the word of Yahweh came in the days of Josiah the son of Ammon king of Judah in the 13th year of his reign so now if you take all right so this is the first time the spirit um, was sent to Jeremiah was in the 13th year of the reign of King Josiah all right, so you had the kings and then you had the prophets that were sent during those times, just like we're sent during these times. All right, um, so 641, I think it is, take away uh, 13. And that would equal what, 628? Or what you would call 627. And that's what Jeremiah started prophesying, 627. And, um, and then also in 586 BC. So let's get it, let's prove it. So this would be around 627, man. So the 13th year of Josiah's reign. All right, five years before the last Passover in 622 that was thrown by King Josiah, the righteous king. Now, so now, Jeremiah 1 and 2, because this is important to know the dates or close to it, their proximity, to know when these things happen and when is speaking about prophecy and what the context is, man. Not just out there winging it. You know, yeah, man, whatever. We Israelites, so I'm just gonna go out here and just, we just throw up anything I can find that say black. Well, we, that means us. You know, so that don't make sense. 
um, that that shows that they're not studious in this in it, you know studying. Jeremiah one and two, to whom the word of Yahweh came in the days of Josiah the son of Ammon, king of Judah. Ammon was wicked. In the thirteenth year of his reign, all right. So that was uh, six twenty eight or six twenty seven B C. Because Josiah started ruling uh, really six forty, so it'd be like six twenty seven. It came also in the days of Jehoiakim, the son of Josiah, king of Judah, unto the end. All right, so it also came um, as, uh, around 609 BC during the time of Jehoiakim, which was the son of um, Josiah. All right. So the Lord was dealing with Jeremiah came and talked to him during the time of Josiah then during the time of the wicked uh, King Jehoiakim uh, who took who took the pamphlets the leaflets from Jeremiah and he ripped them up and burned them like that's like burning the Bible today like uh, polite did all right um, and unto the end of the 11th year of Zedekiah, the son of uh, Josiah, king of Judah, unto the carrying away of Jerusalem captive in the fifth month. All right, so that same year of Zedekiah. So let's get that real quick. All right, so it says in the in it, so it, the spirit was sent to Jeremiah uh, six twenty seven, and then six oh nine with Jehoiakim. And then also um, 586 BC. All right, so it said in the 11th year of the reign of King Zedekiah, who was also wicked. He was the last king that ruled when we went in the bondage uh, under Nebuchadnezzar in Babylon. So when was that? 597 BC. That's when you get the book of uh, Ezekiel. He was around 592. So he was part of those captives that were taken during that time. The set, it was three exiles. Uh, three um, exiles. I think it was three. Three exiles. All right. Into Babylon. You had one in 605 during the Battle of Carchemish, which Daniel and them was taken. Then you had one in uh, 597. When uh, I think Jehoiakaz was taken, and then 586, and, and you know, had Jehoiakim and Jehoiakaz were, were taken, and then 586 was the last exile into Babylon when they exiled the Israelites under um, Nebuchadnezzar. And that was 586 under Zedekiah. So now, so five. 97 I think it is right take away 11 will equal what 586 so now let's go back so when did this when did these prophecies come about and they took place in the warnings from Yahweh and then he brought the judgment on our people for the sins of the kings of Israel and Judah and the people that followed them let's get it Jeremiah 1 and two now so it should make more sense to whom the word of Yahweh came in the days of Josiah the son of Ammon king of Judah in the 13th year of his reign 627 it came also in the days of Jehoiakim the son of Josiah king of Judah all right around 609 BC until the end of the 11th year of Zedekiah the son of uh, Josiah king of Judah so all the way up until 586 the Lord was dealing with Jeremiah. Unto the carrying away of Jerusalem captive in the fifth month of that year, basically. All right, which would be around um, today, would be around with January, February, March, April, May. Around April, May, spring, springtime. All right. Um, now it says, uh, Let's, let's get, get to the point. So what was the Lord speaking to Jeremiah? He was telling him because Israel, uh, the northern kingdom went off and Judah saw it. 
and they saw the judgment that the Lord brought upon the northern kingdom and they still was being wicked. And the Lord was like, all right, man, I've been patient with you. Now I'm going to send my prophets because before every kingdom fell and destruction comes, the Lord always sends his prophets. And then he brought the judgment. And that's what Jeremiah was seeing. He saw Judah mourning. He saw the gates languishing, meaning there was no imports, no exports. There was no food. There was no, no water. And the leaders was all um, that was all boasting and rich. They were impoverished at that moment. And people were literally on the ground uh, looking um, uh, sick and dirty. And they were mourning. They had no way to wash, nothing. All right. So, um, Jeremiah 14 and 1. But it had nothing to do with us being dark skinned, man. Yes, we would, they, the Jews are dark skinned originally. But today, the scriptures call us a what? This is uh, Jeremiah 12 and 9. My inheritance, and inheritance is, the Lord's heritage is Israel, is unto me as a speckled bird. I mean, the bird of diverse colors. All right, so meaning we're, we're scattered all over the place, all amongst different kindreds of people. So we look like different people, speak different languages. We scattered everywhere. So we're like a speckled bird. The birds round about are against her. Come ye assemble all the beasts of the field come to devour. So all the nations came against us. All right, and one of those nations that I'm reading about is the Assyrian uh, bloodline of which you get Nebuchadnezzar. And he was not an African or Ethiopian as people, some people still teach. So now let's get into it. Jeremiah 14 and one, the word of Yahweh that came to Jeremiah concerning the dearth. So the dearth represents, let's get that. All right, so the word of Jeremiah concerning the dearth. So that was the point. That was the context of this chapter right here, Jeremiah 14, the dearth. Or it says the drought or destitution. We were destitute. All right. We were in a drought. Restraint of rain, man. So the Lord brought a famine and drought upon our people because they wouldn't listen. All right. So it says Judah mourneth. Right. So we were in mourning. Why? Because the Lord was targeting Judah now. The top tribes of the southern kingdom. The, t and the top tribe of the northern kingdom was who? Ephraim and Samaria. And they led our people um, into destruction as well. Judah mourneth, so, and the gates thereof languish, man. So let's get that word gates. Because he was like, yeah, the gates mean... Let's see what he, he, wait, let's get it real quick. He said the gates mean your prophets and your preach. Chapter 14 and verse 1. The word of the Lord that came to Jeremiah concerning the dirt. Concerning the who? The dirt. Read on. Judah. See, concerning the who? The dirt. Read on. That means he didn't know it, man. When somebody do that, they say concerning the who? He just didn't know how to break it down. You know, that's why he went, um, to skip right over it, man. All right, so now let's keep going. It said Judah. All right, it's in order to be a Jew, it means you come from a man named Judah. Judah's black. Mourning. The Jews are in mourning because their king got killed, Jesus Christ. See that? He used that scripture and brought it all the way up until today. Yeah, we're in mourning. We lost our land and all of that. You can put that to us from many other scriptures. But this is talking about back then, man. This was a literal thing that happened to us. Just like the the, um, the the judgment that happened upon Egypt literally happened. But you can use it as a reflection of what's going to happen today in the second Egypt. The thing that happened during the time of Babylon, when we went into Babylon and the Lord brought famine upon us, uh, plagues, drought, and then he brought a nation against us is the same thing that's going to happen today in America, it's going to be famine, drought, and then he's going to bring nations against this place. All right. And against two thirds. So 
he, he twisting the scriptures, man, and trying to make it fit uh, his point. Jews are warning to continue with the slavery on slave ships to America. The Jews are rewarded because they get killed by the police in America. We know that, but that, look, look. Right, when they say the gates, they're of language. Let's get that, let me hear him say that. The real Jews are rewarded. And the gates, they're of language. Their leaders, their noble ones, are the gates. They language, they lack leadership. Look, the noble ones. <laughs> He's just saying shit, man. <laughs> He's just saying shit, yo. The noble ones, the gates, their leaders. Look, right. Um, as the scriptures say, it's gonna be a cry in the fish gate, meaning it's gonna be a drought uh, and a famine. All right. So now it says here, uh, in the gates there of language. That means the gate or of entrance. Space inside the gate, the marketplace, man. I mean, we had no food, no water, and our, our leaders couldn't, um, didn't know what the hell was going on. And they were impoverished as well. That's what that means, the gates there of language, meaning we had no imports or exports, no food in the marketplace. That's the gates. That's the Lord said, uh, we're supposed to teach in the gates. That means out in the marketplace. But the gate, our gates were languishing. All right, let's get that to languish. It's in the gates there of language, meaning to droop, to be sick, to mourn. All right, to be weak, to be or grow feeble. All right, so yeah, man, our leaders were weak. All right, our posterity became weak. Our, our economy. All right, our, our um, our stock. You know, imports, exports. So uh, you know, our people were impoverished. They were in mourning. They lost everything in a, in a matter of days. So that's what this is literally talking about. But this guy is trying to bring it up to today. Like, yeah, man, because we lost our king, Yahweh Shai. That's why, and, we, and we're black, we're brown. I mean, we're, we're black Israelites. And we over here mourning, and our gates are languishing, meaning our leaders. And it's like, yo, that's that phony baloney doctrine, man. We know our, our, our leaders, like Al Sharpton and all them are false leaders. And, but that's not talking about now, man. All right. So Judah morning, verse two, and the gates thereof languish, meaning lack of food, lack of resources, lack of imports and export. They're, they are black unto the ground. Who are they? The leaders among our people. And the people that were waiting for their children, they were lost of children. They were losing family members. All right, and they were just boasting prior to that, but now uh, they were what? And they are black unto the ground, meaning what? To be ashy, dark colored, and in, in a sense of shame, you know, to mourn. See that to mourn, to cause to mourn. All right, you got to be ashy, which deals with mourning or shame. In sackcloth or sordid garments. Sordid garments means holy or torn or ripped apart garments, man. So they were literally looking like bums in the street. With no food and no water. All right, and the Hebrew word there would be kwadar. But the word for black in the Hebrew would be shakal. No, not, not shakal, I think shakwar. All right, shakal is like shekel, like a, uh, silver. I think it's shakwar. All right, I may have to get it in a minute. But yeah, so it says here, they are black unto the ground or they are um, bowed down to the ground. The word, that word black or kidar what goes into being bowed down, all right? 
or impoverished or mourning. And the cry of Jerusalem is gone up, right? And their nobles have sent their little ones to the waters. And they came to the pits and found no water. That's what it said concerning the drought. Not saying, yeah, they were they was in a famine, so their skin turned black. That's not what it's talking about either. It's talking literally their garments, everything they was wearing was just dirty and dingy. And they had um, no wealth. They were losing family. They had no water. And it was all a punishment because our people were being wicked, especially under the rulership of Manasseh and Ammon, kings of Judah. So it's not talking about us today, man. It, it can't. They shouldn't use the scripture to try to say, yeah, it means we were black. We're not black, we're brown. That's why the Lord broke down that's why the scriptures broke down Yahweh's um, uh, countenance or his skin complexion as being dark brown. And he was black, black. No, he was dark brown. He wasn't Aethiops, burnt face. This is Jeremiah 8 and 9. All right, that same um, book of Jeremiah. Same message. Just uh, earlier before the uh, famine and the drought happened. The wise, Jeremiah 8 9, the wise men are ashamed. See, the wise men became ashamed. All right, the leaders of our people, they became ashamed. They are dismayed and taken. Lo, all right, they were selling out to idols, selling out to, to kings of these nations and misleading our people. They have rejected the word of Yahweh and what wisdom is in them. All right, so people like Jehoiakim have rejected uh, the words of Yahweh and Manasseh and Ammon and Zedekiah. Therefore will I give their wives unto others. So they lost their wives and their fields to them that shall inherit, it, inherit them. So we lost our land as well especially to the Babylonians and the Edomites at that time, even in 586 BC, uh, uh, Nebuchadnezzar sent Edom up into our lands to inherit it. All right, this is first Ezra four and 45. Thou also has vowed to build up the temple, which the Edomites burned when Judea was made desolate by the Chaldees. All right, so when when our land was made desolate in 586 BC, they gave order to the Edomites to, to burn the rest of it down to the ground. All right. Now, so our, our land was, was taken away from us and given to these uh, heathens even back then. And we were exiled into Babylon all the way up until uh, 538 BC when Cyrus the Great commissioned for Israel to return back to their lands and rebuild the temple. All right. All right. So the so Ezra's the prophet was speaking to um I think Darius at this time. All right, because they, they they followed after the orders of Cyrus the Great and then Darius and then Xerxes. They had Artaxerxes, which was, which helped aid in the process of the, the rebuilding of our temple and upon our land and bringing us back home after the order from Yahweh, which he put upon these Persians, starting with Cyrus the Great. And it, according to Persian law, they cannot change their law. They got to stick to it. All right. So they, they, um, they memorialize the order from Cyrus the Great for us to come back and rebuild our home, our temple, and to return home from being exiled. So that means that these heathens had our land, so they had to give it up when we came back. All right, so it's first Ezra 4 and uh, 49. Moreover, he wrote for all the Jews that went out of his realm 
up into jewelry concerning their freedom that no officer see we're coming back into our land I think this was under Darius so I can drop my damn phone that no officer let me get where I was at there we go it says moreover he wrote for all verse 49 the Jews that went up that went out of his realm from amongst the Persians and amongst the Babylonians up into Jewry concerning their freedom that no officer, no ruler, no lieutenant, no treasurer should forcibly enter into their doors. All right, so don't go back into the land and go around and killing Edomites. That's what he was saying at that time. So when we went back in our land, these Edomites were supposed to forfeit our land up. Think about that. You know, Esau envious, man. But they was in our houses, in our lands, in our temples. And uh, when we went back to our land, they had to give it up. And they had to pay taxes to help us rebuild it. But this time, when your house shot returns, it's not going to be so pleasant. All right? It says, uh... All and and that all the country which they sh hold which they hold should be free without tribute tribute and that the Edomites should give over the villages of the Jews which they held so they took our lands even back then all right yea that there should be yearly given 20 talents to the building of the temple unto the time that it was built. See, the Edomites had to pay taxes to us, a tribute to us, um, for us to rebuild our land. So let's get back to the point. So this that, that goes into us being impoverished at that time, man. This was this is what the Lord was bringing upon us as a judgment, a punishment. All right, in the sixth century BC, and it happened during the time of Jeremiah. So it, it it behooves us not to use this precept if you claim to have the spirit of truth to try to prove that we were black. Jeremiah 14 and 2. They are black into the ground, meaning they are bowed down or impoverished as a nation. The Lord humbled our people, knocked us down. Verse 10, Jeremiah 8 and 10. Therefore will I give their wives unto others and their fields to them. And also black could also go into uh, being frightened as well. All right. Fear. Um, that shit. Therefore will I give their wives unto others and their fields to them that shall inherit them. See them nations like Edom took our lands. For every one from the least even unto the greatest is given to covetousness so the least unto the greatest of our nation at that time was given unto greed and was selling out and worshiping idols from the prophet even unto the priest everyone dealeth falsely man even to this day for they have healed the hurt of the daughter of my people slightly saying peace peace when there is no peace they were saying yeah continue in your ways man the lord got you you know uh you can you can you can um, follow after these idols and uh, the Lord loves you. Just like today in these churches, they, they're uh, serving the Lord incorrectly and they still say the Lord has peace with them and that prosperity doctrine. Look how much you're prospering. The Lord is with you. No, he ain't with you, man. He's setting you up for the uh, for your, your punishment. So they, they heal us slightly saying peace peace man but they don't give you the truth that's how you heal us man that's how we heal our people with the spirit of truth not with soft words all right so that you know so now we're making peace the lord said blessed are the peacemakers for their eyes shall see god man so the peacemakers what they teach the truth bringing peace between the father and the children of israel through your house 
Were they ashamed? See, the shame. Were they ashamed? <laughs> to be ashamed, confused, disappointed, to dry up with her. All right? So were they ashamed when they had committed abomination? See that? So the Lord brought shame upon them. But they wasn't ashamed when they were committing the act of sin and wickedness. Nay, they were not all at all ashamed, neither could they blush. Therefore shall they fall among them that fall in the time of their visitation. They shall be cast down, saith Yahweh. And that's what it means to be black or to be uh, bowed down. They were cast down, man. All right. I will surely consume them, saith Yahweh. There shall be no grapes on the vines, nor figs on the fig tree. And the leaf shall fade. And the thing that goes into famine. So we had famine. We had drought. That's why Jeremiah 14 starts off like that. The word that came unto Jeremiah concerning the dearth. Meaning the drought. Alright. It goes into famine as well. It had nothing to do with us being dark skinned man. Gotta say that again. Uh, the leaf shall fade and the things that I have given them shall pass away from them. That's Jeremiah 14 and 2. All right. All the blessings that the Lord gave to us, he took them away. Why do we sit still? Assemble yourselves and let us enter into the defense cities. Let us let us be silent there for Yahweh, our power have put us to silence. And giving us water of gall to drink, man. It's like throw up and vomit. And, and poisons. Yeah, yep, gall, poison. Because we have sinned against Yahweh. We looked for peace, but no good came. For a time of health, and behold, trouble. Snorting of The snorting of his horses was heard from Dan. The whole land trembled at the sound of the neighing of his strong ones. What's that? The Babylonians coming against us. The Assyrians, you know. The Lord sending Nebuchadnezzar uh, after our people. There were no three exiles. From Josiah all the way up, all the way up until, um, the taken, until he took us away in 586. All right. Uh, and have devoured the land for they are come and have devoured the land and all that is in it the city and those that dwell therein so imagine that man look at Gaza today that's how our people were looking in a destroyed state in the land though we were in our land and we were destroyed there first and that's what Je uh, Jeremiah saw an impoverished destroyed nation that was sitting among the ground literally he was looking at them and they were looking like bums and mourning for their losses <laughs> and they were sick and dying the whole land troubled, trembled at the sound of the neighing of his strong ones for they are come and have devoured the land talking about Nebuchadnezzar and all that is in it the city and those that dwell therein for behold it's cockatrices among you the Lord sent snakes among our people which will not be charmed and they shall bite you saith Yahweh and that goes into these nations as well when I would comfort myself against sorrow my heart is faint in me behold the voice of the cry of the daughter of my people. See that? And their cry is going up. Because of them that dwell in a far country. So the nations made our people cry. Brought pain upon us. All right? Is not Yahweh in Zion? Yeah, he is. Is not her king in her? Why have they provoked me to anger with their graven images. So people are like, yo, y'all got your whole nation right there. You got your land. What the hell going on with, with, with those Israelites over there in the land? That's what they were saying. Well, it's because we sinned against our power. 
Why have they provoked me to anger with their graven images and with strange vanities? The harvest is past. The summer is ended. See, this is how much time went by in those different seasons. When the harvest was supposed to show up, it wasn't there. All right, so it left our people in mourning and impoverished and in a famine and a drought. The harvest is past, the summer is ended, and we are not saved. It's like, yo, it's, it still ain't taken out of this destruction. For the hurt of the daughter of my people am I hurt. See, this is Jeremiah talking now. I am black. Astonishment have taken hold of me. So what is he saying right there? Meaning he was ashamed. He He's in mourning. He's not saying he dark skinned. It wouldn't have nothing to do with it. He's like, yeah, man, it was just, the summer has passed. The, the harvest is gone. There's no rain. We lost our kings and I'm dark skinned. But like, what the hell? Whoa, what? No, man, that's out of context. What he means is, all right, to be ashy or to cause to mourn, to grow dark, man. Okay, in a sense of mourning or sackcloth or sordid garments, meaning ripped up, torn up garments. And he was, he was, just like today, we're in mourning, seeing our people in the condition they're in. All right, but it doesn't mean he was dark. It had nothing to do with him being dark skinned. He was dark skinned, but it had nothing to do with that. Astonishment. See, it's about the astonishment that was happening to him. All right, uh, ruin, horror, a waste of land, city, etc. Appallment. It was a horror scene, man. Whew, like a horror movie. Appallment. All right, so astonishment, horror has taken hold of him. Okay, so is there no bomb in Gilead? Is there no physician there? Why then is not the health? of the daughter of my people recovered, man. You see that? So one of the daughters represent uh, the nations of Israel, okay? So each nation would be like a daughter. And, the, you know, or the Lord calls us a woman or a servant. Now, uh, so, the, so our people were, were in bad health, man, in a bad situation. This is Jeremiah 12 and 1. Righteous art thou, O Yahweh, See, it was righteous judgment that the Lord was bringing upon us. When I plead with thee, yet let me talk with thee of thy judgments. Wherefore doeth thy way, doeth the way of the wicked prosper? So he was, Jeremiah was saying, before the Lord brought the judgment on our people, Jeremiah was like, yo, Lord, when are you going to bring the judgment on these wicked people, man? They wicked. All right, the same thing we're saying today. How long? Wherefore are all they happy that deal very treacherously, man? Said so even today they're happy, but the Lord has taken away the mirth of the land. We're seeing it. The happiness of this place. Thou hast planted them, yea, they have taken root. They grow, yea, they bring forth fruit. Thou art near in their mouth and far from their reins, right? Even today. You see people uh, like these, like these uh, false prophets, false teachers, man. They're close. The Lord is close to their mouths. You know, I mean, they, but their heart is far from the Lord, man. All right, but but thou, O Yahweh, knowest me, Jeremiah. Thou hast seen me and tried my heart, so his reins toward thee. Pull them out like sheep for the slaughter. So we asking the Lord to make a separation. And that's why the Lord said that when he shows up, he's going to push the sheep to the right and the goats to the left. Even two thirds of our people are going to be joined with the wicked for destruction. How long shall the land mourn? Whoa. So what was happening to our land? We were in mourning. Not that we were all the point was not that we were dark skinned, it was that we were in mourning. 
How long shall the land mourn and the herbs of every field wither? For wickedness, for the wickedness of them that dwell therein. The beasts are consumed the, and the birds because they said he, he shall not see our last end. All right, so it was all hell breaking loose upon our people, man, at that time for being wicked. So that's what Jeremiah saw, man. All right, not that he saw his people dark skin. That wasn't important. All right, so our people were being wicked, man. I'm gonna wrap this up too. Jeremiah 11 and 10. They are turned back to their iniquities, to the iniquities of their forefathers, worshiping idols, which refused to hear my words, just like in the wilderness. And they went after other gods to serve them, the house of Israel and the house of Judah. See, Jeremiah saw the destruction of Judah. Um, Isaiah saw the destruction upon Israel and parts of uh, Judah. Jeremiah saw the destruction come upon uh, Judah because he started prophesying around 627 BC, as we just read earlier. Jeremiah. All right, so they are turned back to their iniquities of their fathers, their forefathers which refused to hear my words, and they went after other gods to serve them. The house of Israel and the house of Judah have broken my covenant, which I made with their fathers, man. So when we see the destruction happening in the day, it happens in a process, all right? Uh, famine, the Lord start taking away the, uh, the dainties of this place, and then eventually he's gonna bring uh, these nations against this place, man, destruction. The house of Israel and the house of Judah have broken my covenant, which I made with their fathers. And I just wanted to read this because it explains why this happened to us. Therefore, thus saith Yahweh, behold, I will bring evil upon them. All right, so Jeremiah 14 speaks about the evil that the Lord brought upon us, the bad things for us being wicked, which they shall not be able to escape. And though they shall cry unto me, I will not hearken unto them. Ooh. Then shall the cities of Judah and the inhabitants of Jerusalem go and cry unto the gods of whom they offer incense, man. It says, but they shall not save them at all in the time of their trouble. For according to the number of thy cities, were thy gods, O Judah. So this is why the whole land was impoverished. Because according to the number of cities that we held, you had that many idols in Judah, the land of Judah at that time, amongst our people. So that is why the gates of Judah were languishing and they were in mourning and impoverished and dying. And according to the number of the streets of Jerusalem, have ye set up altars to that shameful thing, even altars to burn incense unto Baal. Therefore, even like the churches here in America, therefore pray not thou for this people, neither lift up a cry or prayer for them, talking to Jeremiah, for I will not hear them in the time that they cry unto me for their trouble, even to this day. You can, you can pray all you want for two thirds, but if they're not meant to be delivered from the Lord's judgment, you can't force the Lord's hand. You know, we can't force the Lord's hand. Even if we pray, the Lord ain't going to be mad at us. But he's like, yo, I'm not going to hear their cries. These wicked jakes out here today. Gang gang bangers and devil worshippers and shit. And Christians. These holly, folly days they celebrating. So, when, so they're boasting, they're living it up now. See, the Lord said that, um, uh, Everything seems so good, cheap, that they think themselves to be in good case. So they're waxing fat and they're kicking again, rebelling against the Lord. All right, so um, that's right, let's get this. This is Jeremiah 3 and 6. Yahweh said also unto me in the days of Josiah the king, all right, 627 BC, and he stopped ruling in 609. Has thou seen that which backsliding Israel have done? Have you seen what the northern kingdom have done? She is gone up 
upon every high mountain and under every green tree and there have played the harlot man all right because there was no righteous kings in israel uh going all the way back to 931 bc with the split after solomon it was, it was all the kings of the northern kingdom were, were wicked at that time but at least among judah you still had a few righteous kings like josiah hezekiah you know i think jehoshaphat was like one as well um so during the time of josiah the king has thou seen that which backsliding israel have done she has gone up upon every high mountain amongst these amongst these nations and under every green tree all right, wherever, wherever there was um, worldly wisdom or safety or, or a way to, uh, to get wealthy, and there have played the harlot so, uh, with these idols, different philosophies, and said, just like Adam did, <laughs> and said, after she had done all these things, turned out unto me, but she... And I said, after she had done all these things, turned out unto me, but she returned not. And her treacherous sister Judah saw it. So Judah saw what was happening amongst, our, amongst the northern kingdom. And they were being wicked and, and then got destroyed. 722 BC. And I saw when for all the causes whereby backsliding Israel committed adultery, it shows the patience of Yahweh. That he, was, he was being patient with us committed adultery I have put her away and given her a bill of divorce right we were married to Yahweh at first and then Yahweh gave us a bill of divorce meaning we were in agreement and a covenant with Yahweh and now he married us to his son meaning put us in the covenant with his son instead to, to, to fix the covenant that was broken with Yahweh he put a mediator in place. And it came to pass through the lightness of her whoredom that she defiled the land. See, our land was defiled, man. And committed adultery with stones and with stocks, idols. And yet for all this, her treacherous sister Judah had not turned unto me with her whole heart, but feignly said, Yahweh. Uh, Fainly said Yahweh, say if Yahweh. And Yahweh said unto me, the black, the backsliding Israel have justified herself more than treacherous Judah, man. Right, because Judah knew better. They looking right at the judgment, and um, and they still became wicked. All right, so the Lord brought that punishment upon us. Let me finish this up. All right, so let's get back to it. And you can read Jeremiah 13. It talks about the parable of the holy, the holes in the garment. When Jeremiah took, I ain't, I'm not going to read it, but just so I can finish up the video. When the Lord told him to take a garment and place it in the, under a rock and um, and then come back and get it. And when he came back, that, that garment was holy and ripped up and dirty. And he said, that's going to be Israel. One minute you look at it, it looks fabulous and glorious. But, and he just grabbed it from anywhere. So just like Jake was getting rich and wealthy and bolstering off of uh, um, strange doctrines, just anywhere. So he said, grab a garment from anywhere and just bring it and put it under a rock and a stone near the water. He came back, it was all mangled and dirty and, ho and had holes in it. And he said, that's going to be the land of Israel and the people in it. Meaning we're going to be languishing and mourning and bowed down, meaning cast down to the ground. Black. All right, made void. Now what these jakes call themselves black Israelites today, they're in that same void mindset. 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 Jeremiah 14 and 1, the word of Yahweh that came to me or to Jeremiah concerning the dearth. See, this should make more sense now. When did this happen? Around the 6th century BC. Concerning what? The dearth, meaning what? The drought. 
See, but when you hear Buddy read it, he's like, concerning the dirt. All right, go ahead. The what? Okay, go ahead. <laughs> you can't break it down, bro. You just don't know. Judah morning, see? Now, we were in mourning, just like our sister nation, the Northern Kingdom. And the gates thereof languished, meaning we had no imports, no exports, no food or, or harvest coming in or harvest come, going out, or water coming in or water going out. They are black unto the ground, and our leaders and the people were impoverished and literally sitting on the ground looking sick and like they lost everything. And the cry of Jerusalem is gone up, meaning their cry finally went up. And what did the Lord say he was going to do? He wasn't going to hear their cry once they started crying. All right. So when it says black, it means to be cast down or bowed to the ground or impoverished. It's not talking about us being dark skinned. All right. If you want to prove that, you can go to these two precepts. All right. So this is Daniel when he saw Yahweh Shai in the spiritual form and how he, uh, in Revelations. John the Revelator saw Yahweh in the physical form, in, in, you know, in the glorified form. Daniel 10 and 5. All right, gets more detail showing that he was dark brown. But this right here, it shows you that the focus is not that he was burnt or black. He was just dark brown. He had shiny skin. All right, look oiled, like oiled up, like a, a dark skinned man. Daniel 10 and 5. Then I lifted up mine eyes and looked, and behold, a certain man clothed in linen, with, whose loins were girded with fine gold of Euphrates. His, his uh, loins were girded with fine gold. His body also as the barrel, meaning he had a green garment on, and his face as the appearance of lightning, and his, and his eyes as lamps of fire. And that goes into the judgment. He said the eyes are the windows to the soul. And he's pissed off, all right? Not, and, um, and his arms and his feet like in color to polished brass. So his arms and his feet are the same color as polished, polished brass. All right, so let's get to the point. Let's go to Revelations 1 and 13 to get more detail. Revelations 1 and 13. And, I, and in the midst of the seven candlesticks, amongst the seven churches of Asia Minor, the Israelites, the elect. One like unto the Son of Man, clothed with the garment down to the foot. Remember, it says arms and his feet, right? Were like in color to polished brass and gird about the paps with the golden girdle, right? So they broke this down wrong as well. They say he got a girdle around his waist. This is talking about like an ephod or like a prince would wear around the chest. All right, you would wear it around your waist for war, but once somebody reached the status of a prince, He's wearing it around his chest, man. All right. That's why I say gird about the paps. With a golden girdle. That means he reached a princely level. His head and his hairs were white like wool. So his head, top of his head and his hairs on his face with beard and everything were white and woolly. Of texture. As white as snow. So it was real white. Now, when he was on the earth, it wasn't like that. When he was born, he had dark hair, just like every other so-called Negro child. These people got to stop drawing these pictures of Yahweh Shai as a baby with white hair. <laughs> or he's showing him as a teenager or a, an adult with white hair, you know? So when he was in his 40s, when he transitioned to the spirit world, when he was taken up, early 40s so now um and you see i'm in my early 40s and you see it's turning white and his feet like unto fine brass as we just read daniel chapter 10 polished brass fine brass as if they were burned in a furnace i mean a dark 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 brown they ain't got nothing to do with black dark brown black is a derivative of blue Blue and black are the same. You, you, uh, just in density, you go, 
go a darker version of blue, you're gonna get black. You go a lighter version of black, you're gonna get blue. All right, that's why the sky is not really um, blue, it's really black. It's just we see certain colors of blue from light being scattered, all right? So anyway, anyway, stick to the point. So brown would be a derivative of brass and different levels of it. it has nothing to do with black. All right. So right here, we'll say he was dark brown, like burnt in a furnace, scorched. And his and his voice as the sound of many waters. Now, now if you want to prove that his people are the same color as him, it just describe his color, his his flesh. And the scriptures say that if you believe any spirit that believes that he came not in the flesh is the spirit of and a anti uh, messiah. I'll say they're against the anointed one. They're contenders to the truth. So his flesh has the color, and it's told you what his color is. And flesh goes into the seed or the genes of a person, and it can tell you their uh, what their people look like. So now it says, Hebrews 7 and 14, for it is evident that our Lord sprang out of Judah. So the same Judah that was impoverished, and uh, languishing and cast down in the book of Jeremiah, there was dark-skinned people because of these precepts that I, I'm reading right now. Not because it said they are black unto the ground. It had nothing to do with it. If it said black, that would mean they were blue. Because blue is a derivative of black. It had nothing to do with brown. All right? Brown has darker levels then you go into brass as well okay so for it is evident that our Lord sprang out of Judah so that's where he was born from the tribe of Judah of which tribes Moses spake nothing concerning priesthood so now if you go into the bloodline of Yahweh Shai and Matthews and Luke you know and also Isaiah chapter 11 speaks about Yahweh Shai being the the root of Jesse and the offspring of David. David, Jesse, Solomon were all dark brown as well. Because they're from the tribe of Judah. So when you read Jeremiah 14 and 1, this is not a precept, precept that should be brought out to prove that we're black. Because we're not black. We're not black Hebrew Israelites. We're Israelites or Hebrew Israelites. Meaning we speak Hebrew and we believe, we know that we're of the tribes of Israel descended all right Yasha Allah but it had nothing to do with black okay these dudes need to tighten up they really should re remove that part of their video do a correction and teach the proper doctrine all right so now first Corinthians 1 and 10 now I beseech you brethren by the name of our Lord Yahweh Shai Mashiach that ye all speak the same thing and that there be no divisions among you, but that ye be perfectly joined together in the same mind and in the same judgment. With that, I'm gonna say, uh, judge a tree by its fruits, man. And if they're teaching the wrong doctrine, avoid them, all right? And even leave a little note saying, hey, y'all going off and tell them why. And then walk away until they fix it, man. All right? So with that, I'm going to say uh, shalom.